to show you at the beginning of the workshop and um, just show you a piece of it. This, this is an example that really integrates all of the different kinds of media that we've been talking about. It has audio, it has video, it has text, it has PowerPoint slides with pictures. And, and we're fortunate to have the person uh, who is doing this one, Chaley Hoover from the US Forest Service, who uh, will also kind of share with us uh, her, a little bit of her experience in, in actually doing this. So we'll play 30 seconds or so of it, and then um, Taylor will tell you a little bit about um, how it's uh, affected the way she communicates. You can ask her a few questions. Hi, I'm Taylor Cooper. I am a research ecologist with the U.S. Forest Service and Northern Research Station. And today I'm going to take a little bit of time to introduce you to some of the tools that we have available for forest carbon estimation. I'd like to acknowledge there is a cast of thousands. These are just the folks who work to so we just want to give you a few seconds to see how this works. And I'll explain a little of this technology. This is the one I was describing as transfer of knowledge from scientists to managers. And what we did in this format is link an index of the topics that are in the video. And as you, as you work through this, if you were to be on a particular topic, the slides on the right hand side would change. And these may also contain links to other websites or to source uh, reference materials. Um, I'll show you a little bit later some tools that you can use that are, that are coming online to do this very easily. Chaley, can we just ask you what your experience was like or what you learned out of, out of doing that? Sure, this was actually a fantastic experience. One of the key things for me when I do outreach is that I think it's really important as a scientist to remember that it's not about me. It's about meeting your needs, whatever that group is. And this was really interesting. What we did was we had topics, and we came and uh, met all at one place in the middle of nowhere in Kentucky. And we each gave our presentations. And there were managers in the room. And this was the really interesting part from the National Forest System. And so they have a really different perspective, because the purpose of this is to be very practical. And so they asked questions, and then they also gave feedback, and there were cards that they would put in envelopes with their name, too. So at the end of the day, you had feedback from the other scientists, you had feedback from the managers as to what was key to them. Because they live in a really different world, and they have very high demands all the time, and it's easy for us to forget what that's like. And then you got your feedback, revised your presentation, and then the next day, the presentation and it was really, I think everyone felt that it was really beneficial. Most of the presentations did change in response to the feedback, but for me, you know, the chance to really have that instant feedback from the managers and to make sure that I am communicating in a way they can understand and giving them the information they need to get their job done uh, was really important. So that, that message really sticks in my head every time I'm working on a talk. I keep thinking of the questions from the managers saying, you know, how does this help me do my don't tell me anything. It's not going to help me do my job because I don't have time to learn that other stuff. So I think for me that was the biggest takeaway was what are the needs of your audience and give them what they need to know and point them in the direction of the extras, but don't you don't have to give them all the details. They just really don't have to do that. So as you see, that's what we're trying to model here in these exercises that we're doing with you. If you can try and focus your message on the needs of your audience, the ultimate way of the success of communications. Any questions for Chairman? Anybody curious? Yeah. Thank you very much. I think this presentation is very useful. Uh, I just want to use this for uh, professional technicians, training course materials, or just for general topics. These are aimed at an internal audience within the Forest Service, which is a government agency. Mm -hmm. and, and the audience is seen as the managers. Oh, managers. Managers who make decisions on the ground. The communicators are the scientists who have, who have the latest knowledge yeah. of, of the particular areas of expertise. Yeah. Uh, when you introduce some uh, application of spatial software, 
when you introduce some yeah, some skills for the application of software where like, like the city green, okay. City green is developed by US for the services. But some general technicians don't, uh, don't know how to use don't know how to use it. Can you introduce some skills by this professional software? How the question is how if you're something like these tech these tools are very technical. It yeah. may not be appropriate for all audiences. And again it goes to the audience need and, and the audience's capacity to understand yeah. what's and use what's being the more technical um, these range a lot of our tools range some of them are very very simple and, and members of the public do use them and usually there's a description of each tool that, that will tell you if it's we have one we call the voice vegetation highly technical and it says right on that this is an advanced tool. For some of the more spatial applications, that's usually, we actually have other parts of the agency that do that sort of technical training, but it's generally only available internally. Okay, how many uh, U.S. Forest Services stations distribute in your country? How many stations? In the research network there are, yeah. I think there's in the United States. A total of eight or nine, and you count the regions, and then there's some specialized labs. That's in the research network. Mm -hmm. About 3,000 scientists in the research So there's a northern station and a southern station, and I can see the northwest, but everybody can access. I mean, most of the okay. work is shared. Actually, the, the, the U.S. Forest Services is very famous, in, not only in the United States, but also in China. There is some relationship between the application of your network. Richard Birdsey and you can have done a lot of work um, with the Chinese forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can try and develop some cooperation. Thank you. Hi, uh, my question is more on the practical side. Uh, how long did it take to build this platform and how many people collaborate? This, uh, this particular project has a core team of eight individuals, um, one of whom did the flash programming for, the, for this type of production. Uh, it's, and it's evolved over the course of two years. And it was very much custom work. But one of the tools that I'll show you later that will be fully released in November is open source by Mozilla, which is the, the, the same folks that make the Firefox browser basically allows you to do this kind of presentation just by a web interface without any problem. So we went into, any other questions? Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering, in the development of this sort of presentation, do you consider some of the educational philosophy or pedagogy behind Do you have, you know, do you have that goal? Do you want that to Absolutely. Um, it's, I can get very deep into that. Yeah, as we talk a little bit later, we'll talk about how we connect these units um, in kind of a constructivist way to build on knowledge that people already have and, and guide them through recommended learning, learning options in order, in order to fill the gaps in the knowledge. Um, and we are also basing this on a general taxonomy of climate change <coughs> has been derived from the summary research literature that we put together. So there's actually a site called climateconcepts.org. If you're interested in taxonomies behind this, I would recommend that, but it's outside the scope of this. Okay, it's one that talks a bit more so That video went for 16 minutes, I think. Pardon me? I think the video went for 16 minutes. Yes. Was that because you had nothing else to say, or you decided that 16 minutes is the sort of... These, these range from 5 to 20 minutes, and they're aimed at being easily um, viewed during a short period of time by very busy people, so that you can do professional updating at lunch break in the field without having to go or to the conference around the world. Yeah. Um, how long does 
these people. Available to the staff. This particular one, uh, this course was released in the last, within the last month. And, right? It went online earlier. The DVD through the federal, federal government takes a long time to put things into print. So the, the web version is the same as the DVD version. Uh, it, was, it was finished late last year and came online early, early this year. So the question, the, the reason I ask that question is, what opportunities have people got to give you feedback on what they think about this tool later on? Right. We, over the past three years, we've done several of these, and each time we did feedback and, and improve. And it started by recording lectures at, at conferences so that we could get it to a broader audience. And then we found that you know, when you add words, and you make it so that people can go back and re-listen, replay the parts of it. It actually improves comprehension and, and uh, we get a much better reaction to it. Okay, um, so I'm sort of showing you the, you know, the vision uh, for um, where this all may be uh, in terms of integrating different media into one place. But we're going to come back to simple basics uh, here. And um, uh, the, the next, the rest of the workshop is, is designed toward uh, getting your words and your ideas into some digital media form that we can put up on a site in the cloud that Amy has set up uh, very easily and uh, be able to, to look at what each other have produced. And so, we're going to um, kind of suggest that you focus on one of three media to take your message and, and deliver with. And that's uh, voice, just do a recording, record yourself delivering your message. Um, voice with visual pictures, voice over a picture. Or video, videotape yourself giving a message, or maybe you want to uh, uh, hire or contract somebody to give it for you. I mean, that would be possible with this version. But um, uh, you're also welcome to, to choose another avenue if you have one. I think um, we had somebody who had the idea of doing an infographic um, that might become the basis for an animation. So um, I think what uh, we're going to do at this point, do you want to talk about the different yeah. uh, options? Sure. Um, I wanted to see uh, just generally among those options, how many of you think you're most comfortable just doing images? Just doing images. Text and image. So, no, 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 no. not doing it. Sound. Sound recording. Just recording with words. Okay. Recording with text. So, or, or how about a, a simple video? It's not mandatory that you do this, but again, you don't have to show it to anybody. But by practicing, you'll, you'll learn and be able to do it. What I wanted to, to briefly show you, as, you, as you're doing these, there are a couple of tips when you're producing video and audio that can be helpful to you and it will make you seem like a real pro. If you're using a, a phone to do your recording and you hold it in your hand, camera will shake and it's less professional. If you have a tripod that you can attach to the phone with various devices, you know, for a few dollars you can get a, a little thing that clamps on your phone and puts it on any big tripod, little tripod, <coughs> you can stabilize. But your elbows form two sides of the tripod. You can even put a string under your feet and tie it to either side of the camera or a recorder and pull up. And that stabilizes your camera. Very simple techniques that will make your video a little bit more professional. Lighting and how you frame your, your photo is, is important. If you stand in the front of the room and take a picture of your speaker, there are a tiny little speck in the video. So it's okay to get so close that you chop the top of a person's head off. In fact, that's how close you 
people shouldn't be. It doesn't bother people that they're the top of their head is in sleep. If you're in dim light, or if you're in strong light that's throwing strong shadows, adding a source of light to the situation can help. With LED lighting dropping in price, a simple flashlight for as little as two or three dollars with a few LED bulbs can help. This one costs about $25 and is dimmable. But again, these are simple and, and readily available, um, even to the point where you had one that probably lost it somewhere along the way. For $10, you can get a, a fully reflector that, um, oh, here it is. So is this device that I wanted to show you just because it's another, another fun, inexpensive tool. If you have light from the ceiling and you show it under somebody's face, the, sh the shadows under their nose go away slightly. And it helps give a better presentation. In, typically in, in professional photography or video, three-point lighting is used where you have a key light, which is the main light on the subject, a fill light, which is a, either a reflector or a light like I showed you, and sometimes a back light. By having lighting in the back of your subject, it helps divide the subject from the background and makes them stand out. The other thing I wanted to talk about is sound, just briefly. If you're using your phone or a camera or your laptop to be recorded, it will pick up all the background noise. And in video, sound is of the highest priority. You can get away with fuzzy, shaky visions. <laughs> but if the sound is not audible, if you can't figure out a say, you can see and you can see how it is. But it's very important to hear the message. So for your phone, <coughs> quite often, and a, a simple and inexpensive adapter that matches the headset and microphone adapter on your phone or on your camera if you have one. Um, in this case, for an iPhone, it allows me to also wear headphones and hear what the sound is doing. And it has a very inexpensive, like a $10 microphone that can be clipped on the, on the shirt of your subject and improves the sound quality immensely. A little technical tip for phones, a simple microphone won't work without amplification. And again, there's battery-powered microphones or an inline amplifier inexpensively that boosts the signal from your microphone with your better sound. Better should be the tech tips. Questions about those? Questions. No further sound. Can we borrow some of those? We may. Maybe if anybody needs to use the, the recording device or the uh, tripod, we have a couple of things here. A light. Uh, just ask. We have several microphones to plug into, at least iPhones. So, um, what we're going to do is this is think about which format you're going to use. I think some of you indicated which way we're going to go. Um, and we are going to give you some time to take your script and um, work it one more time into some chunks that you can uh, then uh, use to do your actual recording or video recording, whatever it is you want to do. Um, so I think the first um, question is maybe if we could just quickly go around the room and you could say where you're headed with taking your script and turning it into media, what, what direction you're going. Because what we want you to do is to, to work with people who, are, who have chosen the same <coughs> uh, meeting um, and uh, you can form groups around, around those things. So um, what, if, if you could just sort of declare where, where you're going uh, and uh, then um, we'll figure
figure out where each of you should uh, convene to, to work together. So, Olivia, do you want? Um, and so I might be a little bit outside the box uh, of what you guys have in mind, but I have a raw video. You can find this. Yeah, yeah. I have a video that I took a year or so ago with a flip camera that I would love to help produce into something finished, because that's what would stop, stop me from sharing it, so that's where I'm going. What is the video? Thank you. 